In this video, I'll be going over how to uh, load a 3D shape into processing and put a texture on it. Um, there, it takes a few steps, but I wanted to go over that process. So this is the end result of what we'll be creating, but I'll go through the code and, and show you how it works. Um, the first thing to know is we'll need uh, a 3D object. Um, in this case, if you look at the data folder, I have uh, an object here. It's kind of like a almost like a soccer ball. Um, it's an OBJ file, which will work with processing. I also, when you export your OBJ out, or if you download it, there's this material file that you'll also need including here. Um, so those, uh, those things should be in the data folder. Um, I have two textures in here. One is a grid pattern and one is a gradient. And maybe I'll, for the first pass of this, I should change it back to the, the grid pattern. Um, what I'll be doing then is loading that shape, the 3D shape, uh, or declaring that shape, um, declaring a variable for the image texture that's going to go on it. Um, that 3D shape will be rotating in space, so I'll be using theta here uh, to rotate it. Uh, the size is set up here. This is a really important thing. Make sure you set it to P3D mode, otherwise uh, the 3D object won't really work. Um, here we're loading in the image, uh, so this is that grid image. We're loading the shape. Look at the syntax here. And then we're setting the texture. Uh, we're running, running this function um, and putting that variable here onto the shape. Uh, the background you can see is just black and um, we're going to be using push matrix and pop matrix to translate things over. Uh, what I did is put it in the center of the uh, screen, translate with divided by two, height divided by two, and rotate it with theta and Keep in mind theta is incrementing as the sketch runs. Uh, there's another rotation uh, so that uh, there's two different uh, rotations on different axes. Um, and then I scaled it down a little bit because I think it was too big in the beginning. So you, you can play around with this or you, maybe this scale goes up and down. Uh, load that shape in there. Just uh, put in the variable for what you declared up there. Uh, and then make sure you use a pop matrix so you don't get stuck. Um, let's see what that looks like again when we run it. Uh, so you can see how that texture, a little bit more clearly, how that gets mapped onto the different facets uh, on the 3D shape. And again, if we just wanted to switch the textures, uh, it's as easy as just changing that and running again. Um, the next thing I'm going to show is just like how you could prep an OBJ file to, uh, from, in my case, Cinema 4D, but you could get do this from Blender, uh, or you could download an OBJ file and, and work with that. So I've opened up a new file in Cinema 4D, and I'm just going to export uh, an OBJ. I'm going to use something simple, like maybe a sphere. Maybe I'll make a different type of ball. Um, I'm going to sort of uh, display the line so you can kind of see how the geometry will get exported out. Um, Maybe I'll pick a little different formation, something like this, so you, know, you can see the triangles on here. Um, I'm going to export this out as an OBJ. Um, I think the default should work. You know, be mindful of how big this is. This might be really large, and we might need to scale it. Uh, you could scale in here, but I think I can just do that in the program. I'm going to export that out, um, bring it into my folder. Maybe I'll just call it ball two and when I export this out there will also be a material file there so um, that's going to be going into my processing folder and here I am in processing here is that other ball two it's pretty similar but uh, I'm gonna load it in here um, I've also just added lights in here so I can see sort of the geometry some shading let's just play that I set the texture off for right now but you can see that that's spinning around um, I'll turn the texture back on and let's see that this is going to be the grid texture so you can see how that gets applied and you know depending on the size of this uh, you might get a little different mapping I think we could scale this up it looks a little bit small And yeah, so you can see how just different geometry might get a different uh, texture attached to it. 
and just just try the other texture on here so that texture kind of gets uh, scaled up a little bit but hopefully this is just an intro into how you can uh, get 3d objects into processing you can see the gradients a little bit off um, I kind of like these weird imperfections and things like that again there's uh, there's more we can do and maybe I'll do that in a future tutorial but this is just getting your basic file set up uh, and showing the workflow